I don't know about you, but I've never liked flies. Hated them. They're always a nuisance. They're gross. And when you see them, you're most likely trying to prevent them from landing in your food. Well, without looking for a reason, a reason came to me. It's these guys. This is the long-legged fly. They have large, prominent eyes. They can be, and most are, metallic green and blue, or green and bronze, or even red, silver, or gold tinted as the light reflects off their bodies like a dazzling gem. They have long, slender legs and a slender body, and one pair of clear wings that may be marked with dark spots or bands near the wingtips. They're found all over the globe where it isn't cold, and they're not like the rest of the flies we don't like. And you've probably seen one of these little guys before, but like me, paid no notice to them. You're most likely to see one of them in either your lawn or in your garden. You're going to find them on the banks of bodies of water or in meadows or woodland edges as well. But definitely not around an outside trash can. And just on the heels of one of our last videos about the green link spider helping to reduce the plant pest population, well, so do these guys. You can view them as little beneficial, underappreciated predators that are always watching over your plants from insect pests. They're beneficial predators both as adults and in the larval stage. With their specialized mouth parts, they feed on a variety of small, soft-bodied insects including other flies, thrips, aphids, spider mites, springtails, leafhoppers, white flies, small caterpillars, oh yeah, termites, gnats and mosquitoes especially, that's great. Some species of long-legged flies even walk on the surface of still water, searching for mosquito larvae to eat. Please do. They've been even known to sometimes carry their prey along with them in flight. What, what they do is they're secreting digestive enzymes into them and then ingest the liquefied contents, just like spiders do. Well, they got my attention too because they wouldn't fly away or get scared even when I got real close to them, which is unlike other flies. They're often seen in this characteristic predatory posture, standing high on their legs, or they're running around on leaves in search of prey. They're excellent flyers, but are usually just running or flying short distances from leaf to leaf, and that's what makes them a lot of fun to watch. There are more than 8,000 species, 1,300 in the U.S. alone, and they're considered a true fly. True flies are among an immense group of over 100,000 known species, so these guys only having 8,000 species is really a small subsect that you can respect. What I was really kind of hoping to see is some of the complex courtship behaviors that this species is becoming increasingly known for. The males of many of these long-legged flies have flag-like appendages on their front legs and or have modified antennas and they'll use them for attracting females during an elaborate, sometimes unique, slow-motion, cycle-walking courtship dance. Many studies have shown that this species give visual rather than chemical or other signals during courtship. The males even might present dynamic flight maneuvers. They may exhibit tiny fluctuating sideward movements while displaying their spread wings. Since their copulation has been rarely observed, researchers cannot say yet what renders a male successful. They just involve elaborate and unique behaviors involving displaying their legs and other stuff. As you can see by some of this footage I was able to take that day when some of them came around, they care a great deal about their grooming habits. I'll definitely be on the lookout for more of these little guys and try to catch some more of this rarely seen behavior. Their life cycle is pretty basic. Adult females will lay her eggs in moist soils or under the bark of trees. And that larva, again, also beneficial predators, They'll be feeding on the soil or bark-dwelling invertebrates, and they'll be developing through several stages in that soil, ranging from moist to wet. Maybe they'll develop under algal mats or in tree holes or little burrows made by bark beetles. They'll pupate in cocoons made up of soil or bark particles cemented together. That's why you're most likely to encounter one of these cool little guys once they reach their adult stage, which typically starts in the spring and lasts through the fall. 
Unfortunately, the adults are so sensitive to cold temperatures, you're only going to see them after the last frost in the spring up until the first frost in the fall. They lead a short-lived life of helping us out, so please add them to your list of allies. They pose no threat to us, as they don't bite or spread diseases. They feed on insects. Plus, they prefer to remain outdoors, so it's unlikely you'll ever be bothered by one in your own home. They're just great to have around outside, protecting your plants and flowers. Well, thanks for watching, and now that you know about these little guys too, hopefully you'll get to witness some of these fascinating behaviors for yourself. Till next time, see you in the woods.